Good morning, everybody. It is December 29th, 2022. If you haven't subscribed to the Weather Talk services, please do so at weathertalk.com. Then go to the App Store and download the Weather Talk app. You can receive my personal notifications for ice storms, winter storms, tornadoes, severe weather, my daily weather forecast. Also alerts when I start a Facebook Live or a new video has been posted. Do all of that at weathertalk.com. Choose your counties that you want alerts for. Then after you've done that, go to the App Store and download the app. It's under Weather Talk. We take a look at this morning's satellite and we see our next storm system beginning to develop clouds streaming down the west coast into the central plains. And this is the early morning satellite, so we're still waiting for the sun to come up. But you can see clouds in our region streaming in from Texas and Mexico and the Gulf of Mexico, where our moisture will be coming from. We take a look at national radar and we see rain extending from Iowa back into Nebraska, southwest Nebraska, and Colorado has some snow, some snow up here north of the Great Lakes. And if you look close enough, you can see some drizzle and patchy rain developing over Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, and Tennessee, extending into Kentucky. So some of you may be seeing some raindrops on your windshield this morning, mostly patchy light drizzle with some pockets of light showers. Now this will increase as we move through this afternoon and especially tonight, tomorrow, and tomorrow night ending on Saturday with widespread rain anticipated. We pull up our 500 millibar vorticity map and this shows us where storm systems are located, lift, and where we can expect weather to occur, meaning precipitation. We watch these red areas. This is vorticity and this is our current system pulling northeastward into the Great Lakes. And you can see as we move through today, tomorrow, and tomorrow night that the system will eventually pull off to the east bringing an end to our shower chances but look out to the west another system dives down the west coast and will eventually spread moisture back into the central United States you can see how this diffluence is occurring as the system pulls into the central US this represents quite a bit of lift we're going to have widespread showers and thunderstorms Monday into Monday night and perhaps even part of Tuesday, some of those storms could be intense. Let's move over to the map that shows us the precipitation and we'll go through this first system and you can see it developing as we move through the next 24 hours. You see quite a bit of rain in our local area. As that storm system pulls away Saturday, our rain will end, but watch to the west as the next system rapidly develops an area of low pressure over Colorado and moves it into Kansas, Nebraska, and eventually Minnesota. You can see precipitation redeveloping and spreading northeast into the Mississippi and Ohio Valley. Some of that rain could be locally heavy as the cold front bumps into all this warm, moist air. Even some severe thunderstorms are possible. We'll talk about that in a minute. As the low moves into Minnesota, it's expected to deepen to 989 millibars. That's a decent area of low pressure. And then eventually it pulls away on Tuesday, bringing an end to our shower and thunderstorm chances. Now, let's take a look at what's being forecast as far as rainfall. We are in a marginal to slight risk of excessive rainfall over the next 48 hours. That just simply means there could be some overland flooding, some ditches flood, some commonly flooded areas. We're not expecting widespread flash flooding, but it is something we need to monitor. We take a look at our 72 hour rainfall totals and notice how there's this stripe of heavier rain. We are expecting one to two inches of rain within this area, a widespread three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half with pockets of an inch and a half to two inches possible where showers and thunderstorms train over the same area. These are the areas that could have some problems with overland flooding. If we were to pull out and take a look at this and next week's system combined, that means both events together added up, we would have a widespread one to three inches of rain. And the WPC has even painted in some four inch bands across parts of Missouri and Illinois. We'll have to keep an eye on this because if we were to get heavy rain Monday and Monday night, that could cause some problems on top of the rain we're having over the next 48 hours. And the ground is partially frozen and does have quite a bit of moisture in it now from our recent snow and other rain events. So we're no longer in the severe drought conditions we were. We're moving towards a flood situation that if the storm systems don't slow down a little bit, we could have some problems. 
Now, speaking of the severe weather outlook, let's go ahead and pull up the Storm Prediction Center's website. As you can see, the Storm Prediction Center has outlined an area for severe weather Monday and Monday night, perhaps into Tuesday morning. This will be adjusted as we draw closer to the event and confidence increases in the final forecast. Typically, a severe weather forecast is quite a bit more accurate in the 48 hour range and 24 hour range of course as you're closer to the event accuracy in the forecast goes up so just because we're in a day five severe weather outlook does not mean we're going to have severe weather this could be adjusted south and southwestward they could exclude us at some point or we end up having severe weather. As far as what I'm looking at, I do think we have some concerns as we move into Monday afternoon into Tuesday morning. A strong cold front, deep area of low pressure with quite a bit of moisture with dew points rising into the 60s. That's typically what we look for when we think about severe weather in the winter is dew points of 58 degrees or higher. And we are seeing the models show dew points in the 60 to 65 degree range which is quite high for January. So we're going to have to keep an eye on this event. We have several days to monitor it. I wouldn't overstress about it just yet. We've got plenty of time to, to watch it. I'll be sending out app notifications about it over the coming days, and I'll watch the evolution of the storm system and see where the forecast leads me. All right, that's it for now. Stay dry out there. We're going to have quite a bit of rain over the coming days. And I'll catch you over on the Facebook page. It's under Bo Dotson Weather or on Twitter under Bo Dotson. And don't forget the website, weathertalk.com, where you can see the daily blog. We take a look real quick at what's on my desk this morning. This is where I make the forecast. And you can see I do have some scattered showers in the area today, but widespread rain tonight, tomorrow, and tomorrow night with high probabilities of precipitation, showers, and thunderstorms. Notice how mild it is even at night. These are well above average temperatures. Typically, we reach about 40, 41 degrees during the day and have overnight lows around 30. So these will be well above seasonal averages. And rain in Saturday, I may need to lower the 40% down to 20 or 30%. But either way, the rain exits on Saturday, dry Saturday night, dry Sunday, dry Sunday night. Rain chances begin to ramp up Monday. We'll see how early they arrive. Right now, I went with a 40% chance and then 90% Monday night, 80% Tuesday, especially Tuesday morning. Still mild, and then the cold front moves through and temperatures will fall into the 40s on Wednesday.